Hello, Cycle Card fans and enthusiasts. Uh, my Canadian friend Andrew, a couple days ago, posted a walk around of his Mercedes, showing all the highlights and details of his build. It reminded me that I'd never done that with my Alpha, even though it's been around a few years. Uh, I've been to Huntsville a couple times. A lot of people have seen it up close and personal. So I thought, well, I'll do one anyway because there's always new people on Facebook and on the forums and they might be interested in what I have here. So this is my cycle cart version of a 1938 Alfa Romeo 158 Grand Prix car. Um, this came about basically because when I was finished with the Miller, I got an idea that I wanted to build something with four-wheel independent suspension. <laughs> and I know most cycle carts don't do that, but I thought, well, you know, it sounds fun. It's something that I always wanted to do in some fashion. And a normal cycle, normal in the way that most people look at it, a cycle cart was, I mean, I, I knew I could build something a lot more involved in, in requiring maybe some some more skills so that I built this Miller and I used torsion bars in the front suspension now there is a walk around of this there's also videos other videos on YouTube if you're interested um, but I like the way that worked out so I thought well I'm going to try building something with four wheel independent suspension and use the torsion bar system um, and so this car and also, I don't know if you can see it back there in the corner behind the quadricycle, there is a Harbor Freight English wheel that I bought because I wanted to learn how to work aluminum, make body panels. And this was a good exercise, really. If you look at this thing, there is not a straight body panel on it. Everything is rounded. Um, but it was a fun build, so let's take a look at it. Start with the cockpit here. Nothing too fancy, but I did build from scratch a wood steering wheel that looks like the Alphas had back in the 30s. It's a uh, mahogany uh, aluminum spoke and uses a quick release, just an off the shelf item, and it kind of hides these gauges that I printed on my computer. That's the tachometer. I don't know if you can see it on the, I guess you can see it. Everything's in Italian. All the labeling on the gauges. I looked up the translations. I made everything Italian just for a little detail that nobody does. But they're just printed on the computer that I made uh, aluminum bezels and Use the Lexan for lenses. Seat, nothing fancy. Um, I'm not really an upholsterer, I just did it myself. Pretty basic and simple. Um, body is, this tail section is fiberglass one piece tilts open I'll get to that in a little bit from this point forward to the nose is all aluminum that's so I could do these louvers and do you know like uh, the cowl on that with the English wheel the louvers I made a louver die um, I could dig that out and show it to you, or if anybody's interested, I could send pictures of how I did that. Um, and the nose is uh, fiberglass like the tail because it's just way more involved than uh, my aluminum working skills. I can't weld aluminum, so if I can't, uh, if I can't do that, and I, then there's no way I would make this nose. So that's fiberglass. The grill, which I think I spent over a week 
cutting out all these pieces out of the same aluminum that the body's made out of. I think it was 40 thousandths. Um, they're, they interlock. I think there's 43 pieces or something like that to make this grill. It was a pain in the butt, but you know, to make the car, I, I just felt like I had to do it and it turned out great. And, um, back here, I don't know if you noticed the four leaf clovers, that's something, it's an interesting story. I'm not going to go into it here, but look it up online. Why Alfa Romeo race cars have a four leaf clover on them. It's something that started, I think, in the 30s, maybe even in the 20s, I'm not sure, and uh, carried on to this day. And my little little windshield, that's all made from scratch. It's an aluminum, I just took an aluminum plate, cut out the frame, uh, milled a slot in it for the Lexan, made the little brackets and stuff, polished it up, and looks like the real thing. All right, back here, like I talked about, the independent suspension. Here's the rear. It's upper and lower A-arms. I made these aluminum bearing carriers out of just some blocks of aluminum that I had laying around. I don't even know what I bought them for. It was years ago, and they, they did the trick. I mean, they worked out well for this. To use uh, hydraulic ATV brakes, that's what those are. The disc, I believe, is a go-kart piece, it's eight inch. The way this is attached with the wheel is there's four bolts that hold the disc to the hub that go through and go into the back of the wheel. And then behind the knockoff, there's a nut that holds the wheel on. So same on this side, dual brakes. And with them being outboard, there's no way the brakes would ever get hot on this thing. I, last Huntsville that I attended, I was using the brakes as hard as anything I've ever driven. And never a fade, never a problem. So I'm happy with those. All right, let's see what else we got here. Somebody asked me about these hood latches, where I got them from. I just made them. It's a little hardware store spring, a piece of aluminum, a little stud that's screwed into the body. And I don't know if you can see a little piece on the bottom, but um, they look like the real the real thing and they actually are functional. These are uh, handles to take the hood off. You really need two hands to do this. All right. In here you have your basic metal setup, just like I did in the Miller. Bolts into the frame, it's aluminum angle iron. There's a hydraulic master cylinder. And this system that I make for my gas pedals, it has a return spring here and then also in the carburetor. So that's kind of double protection there. And let's see. Oh, my um, homemade rack and pinion steering mounted uh, inverted in this one because it's front steer. Uh, tie rods in the front. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you can see it, but let's see. This is the push rod for the suspension. From the lower arm, it comes up to here. This arm is connected to this, which is actually a 10 inch ratchet extension, turned down to uh, 370 thousandths for the front because uh, full diameter is just way too stiff on the front end, doesn't need that. And they sit on an angle, so I had clearance for everything. Uh, let's see what else.
else is interesting up here? Not much. All right, let's go to the back. The rear tail section is one piece that flips open. This is the latch right in here. Push the center of the headrest, pop it open. Somebody asked me, actually a couple people asked me, aren't you afraid you're gonna hit that with your head and it'll open up while you're driving it? No, because my head, when I sit in this thing, my head is about a foot higher than that little headrest. Not to mention the button is recessed in here. You have to push it in. There's a hole in the headrest and you couldn't do it with a helmet if you tried. Anyway, that's that. Um, flips open and I did it so that it reaches a point where the weight is past the hinge so it, pot, it stays open by itself. It doesn't need a prop rod or anything. So that's kind of cool. Your basic Arbor Freight non-hemi in this one because I searched and searched and searched and could not find a hemi anywhere while I was building this thing so I finally had to bite the bullet and just take this one. It's actually, I really can't tell the difference other than I think the hemi in the Miller is maybe a little less vibration but that, you know, that could be anything. It's just, you know, quality control when these things are built, who knows. I don't know how well they balance anything, but that's really the only difference I noticed driving them. They both make good power, and uh, I'm happy with them. All right, let's get to this here. This is the hood latch that I was telling you about. Push the, in the center. You can see releases like that, and there's a pin up under here that goes in that hole. That's what holds it all together. And then there's a locating pin on each side. Keep the sides from flopping around. Because this fiberglass is super thin. I actually had to reinforce it in a few places like where the hinge attaches. I had to put additional fiberglass on the inside because it was just so thin. I really couldn't do body work on it because I mean, it was like trying to do body work on a beach ball. So, uh, so it's nice and light. That's a good thing. I knew this thing was going to be, with all the suspension and everything, it was going to be a little heavier than the Miller, so I tried wherever I could to keep it light, and it ended up at 249, which is only 14 pounds heavier than the Miller, and so I'm happy with that. There's, I mean, there's tons of carts that are a lot heavier than that, so. All right, there's we have a shaft that goes through the middle. It's, that's where the sprocket is, the bearings, and then there's a U-joint. These are steering U-joints for cars. I, it's the exact same thing I used on my Cobra when I made the steering shaft for that. Um, one on each end, and then this this sort of slip joint, There's because it moves in and out as the suspension moves, so it has to be able to slip. Um, worked out nicely. see what else you can see the torsion bar suspension back here same as the front push rod from the lower control arm up to this arm which attaches to the 10 inch ratchet extension these are full diameter just the way they come from the store and um, I had to stiffen them up a little bit with and by Moving this with the push rod attaches to the arm a little bit closer, that gives you a stiffer spring rate because it's shortening this arm, which requires more more force to twist the bar. So it's kind of cool that you, there's several ways that you can do this. Plus, this is left hand thread, and the bottom end is right hand thread. So I can loosen these lock nuts and turn the, the push rod to shorten or lengthen it to um, adjust my wheel weights. So when I first ran this thing, I got it to where it was completely even side to side. 
front and rear both. Uh, let's see, Makuni carburetor. Uh, my homemade intake manifold in order to position the carburetor and air cleaner right in the back of the of the tail section. I wanted to do that because if it stuck out through a hole, I wouldn't be able to flip it open. And plus, I just like the clean look of everything being enclosed. Um, it's a homemade header, just points, goes out and points down at the ground. It used to, some of you might remember, it used to come around to this side and go up through this hole into the fake exhaust pipe, which was kind of cool, but I found that the engine compartment, it just had way too much heat with that exhaust running through there like that. It was right under the fuel tank. I had um, vapor lock problems the first year I ran it. So I changed that and, and the second year I had no problems whatsoever. All right, let's see what else. Um, I just run these little gas tanks because the stock one is heavy and holds more fuel than you're ever gonna need in a cycle car event unless you're running some super long race or whatever, but for what I've done, that's more than enough. It holds a little more than a liter, I think. Okay, now to, to make this easy to work on, this tail section comes off the hinges that easy. As you can see there's a, that little piece and there, and there's a bar just goes in there. That's that's my hinge, so nothing to have to unscrew or un you know, to take it off. It's that simple. It comes and goes back on just like that. All right, what else? Because I had to do the upper and lower control arms, uh, my frame, the main frame members are one by two instead of one by three. And then the upper part, um, you can see here is a vertical, that's where the bearing is for the, the center axle. The upper part is one by one, and that's continued all the way down the side to the front. I don't know if you can see it, yeah. You can see the lower frame and then, and then the upper frame. So it's nice and stiff, doesn't twist, I mean, and it's light. I, like I said, the whole thing done is 249. Um, it's a lot lighter than what when people see it, what they think it would weigh. I mean, it, it, it's because it's big, it's 10 feet long, it's 70 inch wheelbase. It's my fake exhaust pipe. That. Um, I didn't know, there was no way I was going to try and figure out how to taper aluminum or steel tube to make that. So that is actually balsa wood that I carved out, sanded, and glued these or dowels, three-quarter inch dowels that are glued in there. It's all screwed to the car with the hood on. It looks like the real deal another detail that's not necessary but you know just one more thing that makes it look like the inspiration car so let's put this back on <laughs> not as easy as it looks with one hand set the phone down for a second. Okay. So then shutting it, make sure the side 
locating pins are in. I just push it down, it latches. Everything's spring loaded, so no pins to put in, nothing like that. Basically, like an automotive hood. Hey, right, what else? What else? Anything? Yeah, I think that might that might cover it all. Um, this was something that I ran across on eBay. You can buy emblems like this that are made for the center of a steering wheel. That's what this is. So it's smaller than a wheel, like a a wheel center or anything that you know might have that emblem. And it, to me, it's sized just right for a cycle car. So if you're looking for some kind of emblem for your project, check out the steering wheel center emblems. And I think that about covers it. So I'm gonna put it back away and maybe one of these days I'll get to <laughs> bring it to an event because living down here in Florida there is nothing going on I had to go a long way to run these things uh, I think my next project though is going to be a double deck trailer so I can get this and that both in and to go to these things just because I ain't leaving one home here's my other projects I did a year ago 1908 Harley and a 1896 Ford Quadricycle. Those are all built from scratch and they do run. So that's it for this. Uh, maybe we'll see you out at some cycle cart adventure soon.